Senator Sessions. Mr. Chairman, for the last several years at this committee. Excuse me, could I just mention that Senator Feinstein intended to be here, was looking forward to being here. In fact, it changed our plans to fly back to California to be here. She's not feeling well this morning, and that's why she's not here. She's been a very, very valuable assistant in this. Yeah. I apologize. For the sa f uh, last several years, the Judiciary Committee and the Armed Services Committee, of which I've been a part, um, both, uh, and I guess the Intel Committee also, has spent an extraordinary amount of time debating and investigating the legal and factual policy questions surrounding how we conduct the war with al-Qaeda and other organizations, second-guessing good people who made tough decisions at difficult times. So I think we ought to put this in context. Today we're discussing memos that were written in 2002 right after, uh, not long after, the 9-11 attack, when we did not know uh, the extent of the infiltration into this country by cells that may be planning further attacks. Uh, the memorandums that were then written were repealed in 04. Uh, yet here we are in 2010, in large part because of the missteps and delays by the Department of Justice's Office of Professional Responsibility, holding a hearing uh, today to go through the issue one more time. My big overall concern, Mr. Chairman, as I have expressed before uh, and in Armed Services Committee and on the floor of the Senate, that, uh, yes, there were three instances of waterboarding uh, that uh, have received severe criticism, but I would, would say that the nature, extent, and the rhetoric coming out of our committees has created an impression worldwide that there's been systematic torture of people in prisons in the United States, that we violated laws consistently, that the president had a policy to violate the law. And these uh, hearings, I think, have made clear that's really not correct. And um, we don't need to, for heaven's sakes, tell the world our actions were worse than they are, driven, what, by some political opposition to the war? Uh, every time uh, you're in a conflict, uh, the anti-war groups always find something to complain about because war is a very bitter, tough, dangerous life and death matter. People are killed. Sometimes innocent people are killed. That's just the nature of it, no matter how hard you work against it. So uh, you, the people who desire to undermine uh, a policy decided on by both parties and both houses of Congress, along with the president, uh, use these kind of uh, discrete errors and events and missteps uh, as a basis to attack uh, the policy. And we've got to be uh, aware of that, I think, as we go forward. In the aftermath of the September 11th, lawyers in the Department of Justice and our national security professionals had one unifying goal, preventing another attack on this country. The president said, I'm going to use every power I have to defend this country. He meant that, and the American people said, yes, we agree with that. So the question is, what were the reaches of his power? How much did he have? And lawyers are, are you know, in deep disagreement about that. So these lawyers' job uh, was uh, serious. The pressures were enormous. Uh, where the lines, uh, legal lines, should be drawn, and uh, how far could they be pushed? Were they crossing the pro lines of propriety, or, or were they just near the lines of propriety? Uh, that's what the president asked them to do. I think that's what the American people wanted, to use all the power that we could use. I don't think the American people desired uh, us to violate the law, for sure. In his book, The Terror President, see, Jack Goldsmith, who... Uh, is a, you know, an individual who disagreed with some of these policies, wrote a very important book, uh, and he discussed openly and honestly the, what he called the, quote, national security lawyer's dilemma, close quote, which is born out of the conflicting commands and pressures that they uh, have upon them. And, and, uh, he, this is what he said. Stay within the confines of the law, even when the law is maddeningly vague. 
or you will be investigated and severely punished. But be proactive and aggressive and imaginative. Push the law to its limit. Don't be cautious and prevent another attack at all costs, or you will be investigated and punished. Times have changed. Jack Goldsmith's discussion, what could be termed a prediction now, uh, of retroactive discipline and judgments in hindsight uh, have become a reality in the investigation undertaken by the Office of Professional Responsibility in this matter. And I fear we're now in what Mr. Goldsmith called a cycle of timidity. Whatever the reason, the Obama administration has taken a dangerous turn away from the lessons I think we learned after 9-11. We've discussed some of those errors at some length here. In 2010, we have an administration that not only repealed tough and effective interrogation techniques that are lawful, but announced to the terrorists around the world that we have done so in favor of a far more limited Army field manual. We have an administration that gave Miranda warnings uh, and gave a lawyer to a terrorist uh, directly coming to America with an al-Qaeda bomb to attack this country, tried to blow up that airplane on Christmas Day, rather than questioning him aggressively for intelligence purposes so that we could learn all that we could as quickly as we could about al-Qaeda and its new expanded presence in Yemen. So we have an administration that insists on giving Miranda warnings to terrorists caught during wartime on the battlefields in Iraq and Afghanistan. We have an administration that has announced that it intends to hold an Article Three common criminal trial for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and other terrorists that are being held at Guantanamo Bay, rather than prosecuting them, as the Attorney General has admitted, is quite legal uh, through military commissions, which are constitutionally appropriate and have a long history in this country and in other countries. These policy decisions are troubling and, in my view, dangerous for reasons inexplicable to me, perhaps because the administration uh, is uh, uh, trying to um, assuage the pressures from the left uh, and maybe because of some of the uh, chief critics and uh, anti-war activists who now populate the Department of Justice are involved in making current legal policy. I'm afraid that investigations like the one OPR conducted against Jay Bobby and John Yu have sent a devastating message to those who might serve as national security lawyers. In the immediate aftermath of September 11th, under pressures so great that Attorney General Mukasey and Deputy Attorney General Mark Phillip noted that they would wish it on, quote, no American ever and certainly no member of the Department of Justice, close quote. John Yu and John J. Bybee crafted two legal memoranda uh, on the subject of enhanced interrogation, interrogation techniques. One of those memos was later leaked to the press, and members of Congress called for an investigation of the circumstances surrounding the drafting of this memo. After five and a half years, two drafts, and one final report later, the Office of Professional Responsibility concluded, apparently without sufficient legal or factual basis that Mr. Bobby and Mr. Yu had violated legal ethics rules and deserved to be referred to sanctions by state bar authorities. The D.C. Bar Association ethics rules and standards would now be uh, uh, imposed on people uh, with the legal requirement to uh, uh, provide uh, guidance in some of the most dangerous work this country was engaged in. I think there's a danger there. 